Hello YouTube, my name is Ian McCarr and today I'm going to show you the way Factorio is meant to be played. The best setting possible for Factorio. This is a times 100 expensive default real world factory. This factory has launched one rocket. We're going to zoom out for a second to show the full extent of this factory. It's pretty hard to get the gist of the factory, but looking at the minimap you can tell this is a Lab, rather large factory and that's the overview of the factory right there is a hundred percent vanilla playthrough with biters as you can see they're actually killing some stuff as we speak the behemoth biters really give us no respite but we've killed actually 1.2 plus million biters in this factory so i guess i haven't really given them a uh, fair opportunity to fight back either but we're going to do a quick a base tour and i don't know if you can actually do a quick base tour of a factory like this but We'll start so the first thing you notice is this is the original factory right here so where i'm standing right now my engineer these are the original assembly machines producing our transport belts this factory was started on times 100 science when you had to handcraft your first 1000 science before you could build in a build automation so we did handcraft 1000 science before but we noticed this building here is crafted 10,000 plus belts this one here is on 19,000. so this is our personal supply chest for a long time then we can push over to the red science you can see where the red science is produced there is a a few assemblers producing red science now not all of them are working perfectly but when you have this many kind of it is what it is uh, then we push across to green science we have our green science assemblers here nothing too crazy there just a lot of them and then our copper chip assemblers so we did do a semi bus style at the very beginning anyways because uh, we just needed so many buildings it was kind of hard to get by without that then we push to our military science pushing all the way up we will show the productivity screen and the production screen later on you can see our grenades being built here everything merging in and then we'll go look at our train setup later but then we look at our red chips here so these are red chip production area a lot of it's beaconed but not all of it's beaconed typically we just build more if we ran into issues you can see some of our trains working over there and then we got our blue science blue is historically kind of a problem um it uses a lot of resources it's kind of expensive but uh now we push down look at our blue assembly line here it's uh it's pretty big there's a lot of assemblers there overall we produce 4.5 million red science this factory 4.4 million green science 3.7 million military uh, blue science 2.1 million military science 2.1 million yellow science and 1.7 million purple science and that's to launch one rocket we scroll down here look at all time and we can look at our red science 4.5 million green 4.4 3.7 2.1 2.1 1.7 and this is all for one rocket actually i think we type satellite you see one satellite has been launched I guess we could type space science. No, we don't even have any space science, apparently. But yeah, this is this is to produce one rocket. This is our lab setup right here. I think we're trying to tech into something requiring military science. Nothing will work. Um, everything here requires space science right now. It's a little bit expensive. Um, this is energy damage upgrade seven for 100,000 science bags. This is 250K right here. So that's... Uh, kind of expensive when you look at things there's a thousand for that right there so think of where you were when you crafted your first 1000 red science how far down the tree were you because you need 80k for this 25k for that 20k for that which turns this into a quite the awesome session you got to make quite the giant factory to kind of make everything work but yeah so we've toured the original part of the factory here we got the blue science la uh, science assemblers here our low density, our rocket fuel. Some things still aren't fully built yet. The factory never got fully realized. We kind of launched a rocket and then kind of pieced out. Got our purple science right over here as well. And we do have a few empty belts. This was actually a mining outpost here that's been completely utilized. We used all the resources and we did have a kind of a bus pulling the resources across. Um, and there was a lot of resources so you notice some belts are currently empty and uh, that just kind of is what it is 
But now we're going to go run up towards our trains. You notice I'm lagging a little bit here. The FPS is... Uh, Drops slightly in this factory. Nothing too, too crazy, but uh, we have used a lot of resources, and this is a pretty big belt factory. We do have a few bots in the factory. We have 11,000 construction bots. Um, about 1,000 of them are deployed as we speak right now in a quite gargantuan logistics network. But yeah, we're going to go run down the rail line and just see how active our trains are. Sometimes people question my sanity and my use of trains, but uh, I feel like I have a pretty good grip on trains. I think this factory is case in point, watching how many trains run up and down the tracks here. This is the beginning of the factory here, if you look on our mini-map. So we have our original mining outpost here, and then we have our train lines. And we push over here, we have a green chip assembler, plus some concrete off to the side there. And then we have one of our smelteries. So one of the reasons I do not like smelting on site is because something like this it feels really bad to bring on site. It's almost better to just have massive buffer stations and all your trains kind of amalgamate on site. Because I would not wanting I would not wanting be wanting to build this at every single outpost. And this is a lot. Like this is a pretty big smelting setup. I know you could beacon it and you can make it a bit more efficient, but uh, that's producing a lot of resources here. These are proper splitters too, I believe, or very close to being proper. Um, yeah, it's a pretty big outpost, so you could bring this off-site, but I don't know if you'd want to. And again, it gets even worse when you realize that that's actually not the only side like doing that. We have more iron over here. Now we're missing some trains right now. Looks like the factory is kind of a slowing down on us. I'm not sure what's dying as we speak. This factory has been uh, not played for a while. But we do have more set up over here. We got some stone bricks. And then it looks like we have some steel over here. So again, more smelted setup. More, 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 more. We got train over there. So all of this would have to be off site. So you see there's some stations are empty, but there's a lot of smelting. So we got smelting here for steel and iron. And we have smelting over here for uh, looks like more iron. Then we have copper right here. And then we have more iron. So all of this off-site at an outpost, I don't know, feels kind of bad. But yeah, I'll just do a quick run down the rail line so you can actually see how busy this factory really is. So we did see some sections not working. Um, some trains were missing. Maybe the outpost died. This is default settings as well. Uh, trains still continue to kill me. Yep. It's a... Uh, a little bit bad luck. I guess people were going to predict I'd get run over in my playthrough series, but instead I get run over going back in time. And then we got to slow boat our way, which maybe gives us a bit more relativity of how big this factory really is. Our power production, we have 2,400 steam turbines producing uh, 11 gigawatts of power and 35,000 solar panels. So it's a, that's a substantial chunk right there. Um, definitely producing as we speak, as my guy slow boats his way back to get his power armor. Uh, this factory has, over time, lost 24,000 laser turrets. Now the big issue and why we're losing so many laser turrets is because we cannot upgrade damage. Damage is too expensive to upgrade for 100,000 space science for laser damage 7 upgrade. We've lost 20,000 bots, and is this the damage took too long to upgrade, and it was just very difficult to do. So we have took 1.2 million biters down with us, so I guess it doesn't feel all bad over there. Now i got to go find my body. It's actually quite humorous that I got run over now instead of in my other series we're playing right now, and there's my body right there. So that does go to show how active these tracks are, and you can see some of our belts doing their thing so it's almost a bus except things are going forwards and backwards as we slowly tour our way through the factory i'm gonna go check out how many smelters we actually have up and running in a minute here so if we uh click on our power line if we see one of those somewhere we can see we have 4,500 electric furnaces running as we speak 12,000 beacons 40,000 lasers 40,000 lasers and this again is vanilla 
with not a single mod was used to make this factory. This factory was built all on Twitch back in the day. This is a version 1.8 factory, I believe. I don't think it's a version 1.9 or a 1.0. It was before Mr. Spidertron was a thing. And you can just see the full extent of how big this factory really is. And how many trains are running quite actively on the tracks as well. As uh, I did just get run over there. So we might have a lot of buffering, but we do have a lot of trains being used too. This is all two four trains. I didn't do anything too crazy with this because we just needed so much throughput and density that I guess the whole factory as a whole was crazy and we didn't need to do anything extra on top of that. As we continue running, watching our trains stuck in traffic. A little bit of a traffic jam here right now. And we're still running through the factory. This is with power armor with five exoskeletons. That's how fast we're walking right now. And we're still running down the line. Trying to get hit this time. And we do have a lot of buffer trains, which is good to keep the factory up and running. Without buffers, our factory would probably die. This factory was done without using a single blueprint. The only blueprints were used were blueprints that we pulled across ourselves. The things that I copied, such as down here. These are my own blueprints used specifically for this factory. Unique to this factory, I guess you could say. You can see just how big of a factory this really is as we keep running down, down, down the line. And it's all producing. And we can go check out how big, how much our outposting was as well. So you see how active the tracks are here. With biters constantly attacking us. Train, 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 train. And these are all going to outposts way out in the beyond. So we have a iron ore outpost, a copper, another iron outpost here. And they're all waiting to load. So we would actually have more iron being used if these guys were not waiting to load. But outposting was a pretty big problem. Copper ore, coal, and then we keep running across, across, across. Iron outpost, coal outpost, iron, iron, copper, and iron way out there. That is a big outpost. That is how far we went for our resources, but wait. We also went up. So we have this right here. This outpost is almost completely depleted at this point. And then we go up and up and up and up and up and up. No radar area. And up in a random solar farm because why not? I think it's because we lost power at one point. And all these are efficiency modules so we don't get attacked as much. But we still get attacked a lot. fortresses here and up and up and up and up and that is where we finally stopped if we zoom out you can see a radar chunk right there with an auto save that takes 40 minutes so that is how big our factory ended up being and this has launched one rocket just one rocket here And I would say that this, ladies and gentlemen, is the way that Factorio is meant to play, be played. I have a few people on our Discord who've uh, also played a times 100. Um, I'm not sure how many of them have actually finished it. Uh, one thing I would suggest is maybe turn off your evolution a little bit. Because we were just producing red science when we had big biters. Uh, I think we're just pushing into green science by the time we had big biters, which is kind of problematic. But uh, yeah, this is the ultimate factory and it just launched one rocket so you think you're up for a challenge maybe instead of modded playthrough you can play times 100 expensive science and then you'll end up with a factory like this a little bit big and we only ever produced one rocket i guess we have another one ready to go but uh yeah not even that much backlogged you know, look at that there. Five hundred and fifty-five million copper cable, four point two four million iron plates, three hundred and eighty-six million iron ore used, two hundred 
278 million copper plates and 255 million copper ore for one rocket. Times 100 expensive rail world, the way it's meant to be played. Changed my mind. I'd like to give a special shout out to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make this content happen. Without your support, I would probably be napping right now. So thank you very much for inspiring me to continue making more factorial content. Until next we meet, ciao for now.